Jolly Car 86 uh, Incorporated. Uh, that came about because uh, it was in August 16th, 1886, that Appalin started its first electric street railway. The Appleton streetcar system became the first commercially successful electric streetcar service in the United States. And that has to have another little addition to it by saying that it was the first hydroelectric powered streetcar line. There were other streetcar lines in the nation by 1886, but none of them were powered with hydroelectric power. And that what makes this particular system so unique and so different from the rest, because had it not been for the fall of the Fox River and the fast current, power company people would never foresaw the opportunity of generating electricity for uh, this particular program. The car started out in the uh, flats uh, at the car barn on South Oneida Street. It was always very interesting to me as a child to see the streetcar hanging on the outside of Oneida Street Bridge. It always seemed as if there was some fear that it would break off and fall into the river. The track actually you could go both north and south from that building. The local car would turn left and go towards downtown Appalachian up the Oneida Street Hill. And, uh, and then it went up the um, Oneida Street Hill and uh, turned by the YMCA and came out and into a double track system by the Urban Zilke building. Now the local car was able to turn right and to get on the College Avenue. And let's assume then it went, went down College Avenue to Rankin, north on Rankin to Pacific, and east on Pacific over the Pacific Street Bridge to the Riverside Cemetery. There the motorman would have to change the poles and <clears throat> he had a, sometimes, a, depending on how many customers he had and how many stops he had to make, sometimes he'd have a few minute wait before he started off. On the local car, the motorman, he was everything. He ran the car, he was cashier, he, he did the whole bit. One time, uh, I, I happened to be a member of First English Lutheran, and that's right there in the corner of North and Drew. And the pastor there had a son the same age as me, and he had some buddies. And one spring when the snow was real packy, they, they built a huge snowman and set it on the, set in between the tracks and waiting for the streetcar to come and smash into it, you know. We were one of the first families in the neighborhood to have a telephone because of Dad's work on the yeah, track. Yeah, that's probably why he, he had, had to one. be called yeah. Uh, yeah. when they needed him, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we had a telephone. Yeah. And then he didn't like it when some women were on the line talking, and here he had to make a business call, and some of the women would be hanging out. <laughs> the farm ladies. Getting over to the interurban, the um, Cars again left the car barn, came up Oneida Street Hill, and uh, and then they would some would stop over the intersection of of College and Oneida, and others would wait. And then there was a man there that, if I'm not mistaken, was known as the starter, and he'd make sure that he was watching the cars load and what with passengers and whatnot. So now we're going to go to Kokona, so the car goes down. Uh, it goes north on Oneida Street to North Street, east-north. There it turned right. That was just before you got to the Northwestern Depot. Turned right and went down North Street until Rankin. From Rankin to Pacific, the local car and the interurban car used the same track, but they're time schedule was such that they didn't interfere with one another because it was just a one-track system there. At Pacific and continued straight north uh, until it got up to the Chicago Northwestern right-of-way uh, by the Appleton Coated Paper, which is now Appleton Papers. Then he would return back down to Rankin, 
north or south to college and then up to Oneida Street where there was a double track system and they were meeting another car coming from the west. My father came from Germany. He was three years old and then uh, he got a little older. He went down to Milwaukee and started on the streetcars and all, whatever he could do down there. Mm -hmm. and met my mother, got married, and then they, uh, he was uh, driving uh, city streetcars in different times, you know. And then he finally was sent to, to the Anna Urbans. Then they proceeded up College Avenue to State Street, and there they turned left, where Morton Pharmacy is now, it used to be Appleton Pharmacy, it used to be Schlintz Brothers Pharmacy, way back. Then it went down past St. Mary's uh, Church and School, and on out to Prospect. 1924. Then A.K. Ellis, he was the head man, and yes. he came to my father and he said, you're going to be the superintendent of transportation. We need somebody for that. No, 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 don't don't ask me to do anything like that. He said, oh, yes, you are. The next morning, my mother said he was all dressed up and way to work he went. <laughs> there turned right as you approach the hearthstone up to a Mason, up to a Memorial Drive. Then it went north to Mason, on an intersection of Prospect and Memorial Drive was another double track system where a car going opposite direction that they could pass. My dad was uh, the foreman on the track. I don't know how many men he had working for him. Sometimes it's seasonal. In summer there was different kind of work and what there was in winter. But he sure liked track work, and he started it very young. Then up to uh, Mason Street, where there's a little grocery store in the corner there, and uh, I might say past Pierce Park as we go along, turning right, and then going out to College Avenue, where it terminated between College and the Sioux Line Railroad tracks. That was what was then known as the Sioux Line Railroad. Uh, then it returned back down again to downtown Appleton and uh, kept going. In it. Cars ran, I, if I'm not mistaken, the cars ran till about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, then returned down to the car barn, they called it, car barn. And uh, that was the local area. Going south, the car went over the government canal, up the hill, past St. E's Hospital, and then it traveled on the west side of South Oneida Street all the way out to Waverly. Now that was a popular car for young people because many young people didn't have them. automobiles and Waverly had some big bands. Uh, many big bands came to Waverly for dancing. Then they had the Jack Rabbit. She's got a picture showing here of the Jack Rabbit. And it was a great place for entertainment on Sunday afternoon. And, and then uh, I think on Wednesday night they'd have dances out there. So the car was a great means of transportation to transport people that wanted to dance. Out at Waverly, where Highway 114 comes in, their car turned right and uh, went into uh, Menasha, down the main street of Menasha, and proceeded on into Nina. In downtown Nina, it turned left and stopped approximately where the Valley Inn is located. And that is about where the Oshkosh car uh, came to Nina, and the transportation company that ran the Oshkosh car, they also had a line that ran from Oshkosh to Amro and back. And then the uh, Oshkosh car went south of Oshkosh a ways and met up with a Fond du Lac car, and the Fond du Lac car then went 
south of Fond du Lac quite a ways that might have hooked up with a, a line out of Milwaukee, but I believe that it was almost possible to travel from Green Bay to Milwaukee by a streetcar, but you had to change uh, companies several times, changing cars.